and uh, having said that whenever you ask for history of vaccination and then the child gets it the parents immediately associate this directly that should also clear that there is not a direct association but this concept of what I am going to try to explain here is the molecular mimicry concept. Okay, some viral particle or some viral antigens could have mimicked and created antibodies in the child's body and that has cross-linked, that has caused all this autoimmune condition. So, the history has to be very, very straightforward, not to confuse the parents or not to give unnecessary panic. Okay, so most often we see such kind of real life situations. So, so coming to the pathophysiology, that's one word, it is molecular mimicry, okay, not all these you don't want. What happens is, there is a genetic susceptibility for Adam also and whenever there is an environmental trigger for such children, maybe a vaccination, maybe an infection, what happens? Immune dysregulation happens. So, the antibodies that are produced inside the human, inside the child's system, this goes and uh, reacts with the myelin sheath particles. There are many uh, glycoproteins, many types of, uh, many components of the myelin sheath with, among which the uh, cross reaction happens. So, you have to write this particular term that is molecular mimicry in the exam that is very, very important and explain what happens. So, it can be a molecular mimicry which is most often told or it can be a direct neurotropic organism involvement also. Right. So, both of these can be can be pathogenic for the onset of Adam. So, what happens is ultimately there is an immune mediated injury. So, this injury uh, for the this injury happens in the various components of the myelin sheath and this starts an inflammation cascade and finally what happens is the neuronal damage. I will show you a picture of how the MOG antibodies form and how they uh, attack and uh, cause the neuronal injury later on. So, how is the clinical presentation of Adam like? You cannot pinpoint that this is going to be the Adam's picture, but what you have to understand is there is encephalopathy. Severe encephalopathy cannot be explained by focal deficits. Definitely, Adam has to be your number one differential diagnosis after your infections and all, right? So, there is uh, it can be a mild event to a severe a multifocal neurological deficits. So, usually it starts with a prodrome. This prodrome will be a very non-specific one like the child has a fever, headache. So, somewhere between 2 to 4 days the child has and suddenly it is followed by neurological symptoms one by one and these neurological symptoms will reach the peak in the first week or even before that in the first 3 to 5 days the deficits are reaching at such a peak before even the parents could notice like what is happening for the child, the child exhibits focal deficits one by one and it attains its peak. So, the child has headache, vomiting, meningismus and encephalopathy. So, alterations in behavior. So, that is also noticed by the parents very, very typically. And where exactly the lesion is? So, all these lesions that I am going to show you in the MRI. So, the site of lesion will determine the clinical feature. Okay. The features, encephalopathy will be the core. It remains mandatory for the diagnosis of Adam. So, depending on the site of lesions, the clinical features will vary. So, in case if it is in the cranial nuclei, so cranial nerve palsies, if it is in the occipital, then it causes diminution of vision and uh, paresis, if it is in the pyramidal tract, pyramidal signs, cerebellar involvement can cause cerebellar signs. So, all these, the features will entirely depend on where the lesions are present. So, the maximum deficit is usually seen within the first 2 to 5 days. That is very, very important. And uh, the radiological profile and sorry, the radiological findings and some findings can evolve over the initial three months, but the peak is reached uh, in the first one week. So, that you have to remember. In case for the like the child has, child has come to you or the onset of events you know and then in the first three months, the clinical findings and the neurological findings can come, can evolve, then they can disappear or they can gradually resolve. Okay. But after the three months, any new finding is considered actually as a second event. So, this is what I told you. This is going to be a polyphasic Adam, not the first event. Okay. So, most often Adam is a monophasic or it is just a one-time event. But after three months, it is going to be a second event. And um, sometimes in the first episode, you diagnose the patient as an Adam. And 
it can be like in the next time, the next even maybe after three months or six months when the child comes to you again with a, a focal deficit like a stroke like event, there is no encephalopathy, it might be an evolving MS, it can be a emoji associated demyelination. So, it can be an initial presenter of such illnesses also, that is other demyelinating syndromes, this Adam can be an initial presenting event also. So, remember that.